Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we're going to shed a little light on our Ender 3 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to shed a little light on our Ender 3 by installing an LED light bar in the top aluminum crossbar. And we're going to do it without needing to solder anything, and we're going to do it for under about 20 bucks. And of course, the great thing about this is it'll work for pretty much any 3D printer that's made out of aluminum extrusions like our Ender 3 here. If you're wondering why you'd want to add lighting to your 3D printer, well, it just makes it easier to see what you're doing. Uh, plus, if you're doing time-lapse videos, you'll appreciate not having to leave your room lights on. If you've ever forgotten you were doing a time-lapse video and turned out the lights when you left the room, this is for you. Now let's go over what we're going to need for this project. You'll need a 12 volt LED tape in a warm white or daylight color with a switch and a power supply. You'll need some PLA filament in a natural or clear color and a 3D printed light diffuser. Now I'm using this five meter LED light strip that I bought online for less than 20 bucks and there's a link in the description. Now this one is a daylight white color but you can also get it in a warm white color that's a little more like an incandescent bulb in its color profile and if you want to get fancier for a little more money you can find these in color changing varieties where they've got the red, green, and blue LEDs on the strip and you can change the color with a remote control or a smartphone app but this is just a basic setup here. Let's go ahead and get this thing out of its box. One thing that I really like about this is that it includes the switch and the dimmer module, so you can set it to one of five brightness levels. Plus, it includes the 12 volt adapter to run it. But the best thing about this specific one is that the wiring from the switch module to the LED strip is already taken care of. It's already soldered into place. All we're going to need to do is cut the LED strip to the appropriate length, and it's got markings on it to show us where we can cut. For the light diffuser, we'll print this STL file in natural or clear PLA. The diffuser evens out the light from the LEDs, providing a consistent level of illumination. The thing that we're printing is really a printable insert for the V-slot channels in the aluminum extrusions, designed to keep dust and debris out of them, and or provide an accent color for your printer. But because they simply clip into place, they make an excellent diffuser when they're printed in a natural PLA. The natural PLA has no added dyes, so it doesn't block much light. This STL file is linked in the description, or you can go grab it from Thingiverse. It's by Thingiverse designer L.M. Pui, and it's thing number 3890851. The PLA that I'm using for this is 3D Solutex Natural Clear PLA. I've had this spool for a while now, and it's just one of those staple colors that I like to keep handy. <laughs> it's more of a non-color, but you know what I mean. Now we need to print this thing wide enough to fit in the channel in the V-slot extrusion right here on the underside of the crossbar at the top of the printer. Now the distance between the uprights is about 250 millimeters and we need to leave about 5 millimeters of room for the wiring. So to fit this space it needs to be about 245 millimeters wide. But Brian, I hear you saying, the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro only have a build footprint of 220 by 220 millimeters. Heck, the full width of the bed is only 235 millimeters. We'll never be able to print this as a single piece. Ah, but you can. You can print a diffuser large enough and as a single piece using this one simple trick. And I'll show you how to do it in Prusa Slicer. So let's go do that now. Let's drag the part onto the plater, and since it comes in standing on its end, we need to make use of one of the tools here on the left side to get it to lay flat. When you have a model selected, clicking this tool shows you the different faces of the model, and when you click on one of the faces, Prusa Slicer will orient the model so that its face is flat on the plater. Now this tool is really called the Place on Face tool, but I always call it the Face Plant tool for obvious reasons. So now that we've got this thing face down on the plater, we need to expand it in the long direction, out to 245 millimeters. And in order to do that, we need to unlock the scaling constraints down here. Now ordinarily, when you're scaling a model, you want to scale it proportionally along the X, Y, and Z axes. But in this specific case, we just want to stretch it out a little longer. And we want to keep the other dimensions the same. 
So click the lock to unlock it, and then we'll be able to adjust each axis independently. With that control unlocked, click into this field. On the plater, it shows you which dimension you're going to be affecting, and here it shows that we're making it longer. So change this value to 245 and press return. Now the model is longer, but you'll see that Prusa's slicer has kind of gotten upset about the fact that it's larger than will fit on the plater. So now we'll click the model to make sure that it's selected, and then we'll use the rotation tool here. Click that, and you'll get some nice chunky control handles. And one of the cool features of this tool is that you can just freely rotate the model if you want to, but if you drag onto these guidelines here, it'll snap right to them. Now these larger ones near the center of the circle are all 45 degrees apart, and since we want this to be rotated exactly 45 degrees, we'll make use of these guides. And now the part is rotated just like we need in order to fit within the available space. So that's the one simple trick. You can rotate a part, make use of diagonal space, and print something larger than you could have without having rotated it. Now I'll slice this and send it over to the Ender 3. These really don't take very long to print, which is nice, and this one clocks in right around at the 20 minute mark. And now that that's done, we'll just pop that off the build plate. So now we've got our diffuser and we've got our LED strip with the power supply and the switch. That's everything that we need to get going, so let's get going. The first thing we need to do is cut the LED strip to the correct length for the crossbar. Holding it up here, you can see there's a cut line at just the right spot, so we'll cut the strip there. Scissors work fine for this, or you can use the flush cutters that came with the printer. These LED strips have a peel and stick backing, but we're not going to peel that backing off. The LED strip weighs next to nothing, and it'll be held in place by the diffuser. One thing that you'll observe right away after doing this is you're going to have a whole bunch of LED strip left over. You can use this to add lighting elsewhere in your space, like under cabinets or whatever. You'll just need to buy an extra power supply and connectors. I think you can get snap-on connectors for these too, so you still won't have to solder anything. Now we can install the LED strip. It just tucks into the space in the V slot here. Once you've got it in there, snap the diffuser in to keep the LED strip in place. The cable should come out on the power supply side of the printer. The cable for this is nice and long, so we'll need a bit of wire management. So let's make use of the V-slots on the back of the uprights on the power supply side of the printer. Make sure the printer is turned off and unplugged, and then loosen the screws holding the power supply up against the frame. Set the power supply down on the bed. Then you can tuck the cable in. Now there are two V-slots on the back of the upright, and one of them has the holes for the power supply screws going through it, so don't use that one. Use the one that doesn't have the holes in it. It's the one furthest from the bed. Once you've got the cable from the LED strip tucked in, carefully press the power supply back against the upright, making sure that you're not pinching the cable. Then reattach the power supply with its screws to keep everything in place. Now there's plenty of room in that V-slot for the cable to move around, so be careful not to tug too hard on it and tear it off the LED strip. Oh, and if you're doing this on an Ender 3 Pro, which has a thinner power supply, go back in time about half an hour and print out a second diffuser, and then you can snap it into the extrusion to keep the cable in place. Okay, the dimmer switch module has peel and stick squares on the back of it, so a good place to stick it is right on top of the power supply, like so. Now just plug the power supply into AC power and then into the dimmer switch module. And when you turn it on, you can say, let there be light. And when you dim it, you can say, eh, hang on a minute, let there be a little less light. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. Super simple. We've got a brighter outlook on our future prints, and we didn't have to solder anything to do it. Well, that's about it for this episode. And now that we're at the end, I'm going to go print something cool, and I want you to do the same. And hey, we'll be able to see it better while it's printing. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And whether you're interested in buying the things that were featured in this video or just buying things online in general, there are links in the description to get you to the right place. I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at as well. 
Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Subscribing is absolutely free and is an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.